Hello, friends. Hello, Jesse and Lisa. Does this does this mean you're home? I missed a video if you're home already. Uh, but how exciting to see you here today and how exciting that now I've been all over the country in the last two weeks because I got to follow along with you guys. So, oh, hang on. I'm wiping something off of this dog's face. You're fine. You're fine. Uh, so happy Friday, everyone. Uh, all right. Home safe and sound. And was there, is everything like you left it? The house was okay. Your little dog travels really well too, huh? That seems like a long trip for a little dog. When we've taken our dogs traveling, we have to pick something that's, you know, just within, uh, three hours or so, just because three big dogs in a, even our car that's pretty big, that's still pretty cramped for three big dogs. So when we've taken them camping and stuff, we try to limit where we go to uh, about three hours or so from here, which you can still visit a lot of places. Hello, Joe, Sue, and Angel at the Bud Files. Thanks for being here. Um, I'd like to start off with our uh, channel stats. And let me make sure uh, I sent Steve the link for StreamYard at Facebook. He did respond, but I just want to make sure. I don't know why I get nervous about that. I want to make sure I really did send the right link. Of course, the computer wants to be ultra slow today. It is a little or a little on the slow side. My upload speed is a little on the slow side. Oh, I have to get logged into the right Facebook account here right quick. So I told him 2.15 my time, which I think is 6.15 a.m. Australia time. And how interesting, right, that um, we had an Australia guest Yes, so I sent him the link. Let me make sure. I'm gonna I'm gonna log in with that link I sent him and make sure it brings me to this stream. Cause once upon a time, okay, yes. So Oh, and I realize you guys might not have been able to hear me. So I went to Facebook where I sent the link to Steve for today's show. And I just now checked the link to make sure it put us in this stream. Hello, Vicki Lund, Psychology Noir with Dr. Lund. How are you? I'm so glad to see you today. So we're going to go over channel stats right quick. I told him uh, 2.15 my time. That is 6.15 a.m. Um, Australia time. Do a share screen. All right, and here are channel stats. I don't know if that helps any. Let's put it back this way. Maybe make it a little bit bigger over here. Yeah, that's better. Yeah. Make it a little bit bigger so y'all can see that last column there. Okay. That's good. So... We're looking at just looking at subscriber counts. It's not the only thing that a content creator wants to use to determine whether or not what they're doing is working for their viewers and getting them noticed on YouTube. Um, hello, Ryan and Devin at Our New Land. We have some fun news to share about that channel here in just a second. So we're going to go through our channel members subscriber counts first. And again, the yellow cells mean they they are holding steady at whatever their subscriber count was last Friday. The green obviously means they've gained subscribers since last Friday. And then that reddish color means they've lost some subscribers since last Friday. Lots of things factor into that. Um, there are some kind of predictable patterns, though, as far as upload frequency and uh, what kind of content you're uploading that will keep your subscribers and help you gain them a little more, uh, again, predictably than other uh, ways of managing the channel. Um, so we'll talk about a couple of those as we get to them. But our friends and Texas neighbors rooted in Texas, Nina and Boyce at uh, rooted in Texas are holding on to the 822 subscribers that they had uh, last week. Hello, Ralph at Webs Web. Thank you for being here today. Um, my friend at Ordered Steps. Check that out. Check that out. She was at 201 subscribers last Friday. She's at 425. 
she posted some new content um not a long video or anything but it had been a little while since she'd posted any new content so uh the stars are finally aligning for her i know you guys have watched me for months and months and months and we've been hovering around that 190 to 200 number for so long and i am thrilled to see that 425 subscriber count number there today so again if you haven't checked out her channel yet please go and help her uh keep on this path uh, my friend Akashi Chris is at 359 subscribers today. That's up three subscribers from last week. 12 Stones Ranch, our Texas neighbor uh, and channel member Byron uh, has lost a few subscribers. He's at 1,760 subscribers, but he did have a new video go up in the last week. So check that out. Um, and I just want to point out again that he had this huge burst of subscribers uh, last year, I think in the fall after the Pinecone Fest. Great way to network your channel and meet people and get them excited about what you're doing so that they can support you is to participate in these real life meetups that happen from time to time. So he went to the Pinecone Fest, met a lot of people, came home with like uh, 2,000 subscribers. <laughs> So we haven't done any live meetups yet. Um, Byron has been to our house. So we've met individual content creators and made new friends that way. And Akashi, Chris, and her husband, Stuart, from Mind Forked have been to our house. Um, so uh, take advantage of those opportunities when you get it. I mean, it's fun, too. But take advantage of people having uh, chances to really meet you live and in person. Um, our friend Joe Hupp, also from Australia, is down to 289 subscribers today. He hasn't put up a lot of content in several months, but he did have a new video go up a few days ago. Uh, it's not uh, like a channel necessarily related video. I don't think he was doing a shout out for another channel, but do check him out. He's been a longtime channel member for us. My friend Weave over at the previous Weave's World, the channel is just called Weave now. Hello, mom of four boys. I hear you. So, Fun fact, y'all, my last three were born in less than three years. So I had three in diapers for a little while there. I worried that, that Ty was never going to get potty trained. Um, and you just you just have to go with the flow, right? No pun intended there. Right, mom of four boys? I know you learn how to multitask really well when you've got a big house full of kids. Um, and again, mine were so close together. Uh, I was I was either pregnant and nursing or carrying a diaper bag or all of the above for like a total of six years because uh, the kids were all born in five years. So uh, there was a squirrely moment there. So my friend Weave is down to 3,080 subs 3 something subscribers. Uh, he has not posted content in a while. He's still kind of on a break. Some health issues going on with his grandparents. And there's just been a lot of stress related to that. So channel uh, content creation has not been a priority for him. Uh, but it's he's just a wonderful guy, very generous guy. And I still encourage you to go check out previous uh, live streams and things on his channel because it's still super, super fun. And hang on, I just got uh, a notification that uh, Steve sent an attachment. Let me see what that is. Okay, I'm not sure what this is. Okay, looks like he is confirming the appointment. But let me make sure there's not a message to go with it. Okay, awesome. So he should be here shortly. And let's close that. And get back to our sheet here. So mom of four boys, when you're at our... Um, channel. There's a subscribe button, you know, when you go to a, a YouTube channel, there's the little subscribe button. So for the channels that have memberships available, there's a button, a join button. It should also be if you're on a computer, I don't know what how you're watching today, but if you are on a computer, I know that below the video or the live stream that you're watching near where you can click the thumbs up, y'all click the thumbs up for me. Where, near where you can click that thumbs up, there's also a join button. 
So we have memberships that start at 99 cents a month and then they go up to $2 and 99 cents a month. And those memberships go right back into buying horse feed and duck feed and dog food and cat food to help support the work we do with our rescue animals and our pets. Um, and it's a blessing. Every membership is a blessing. Every super chat is a blessing. Every thank you and like and share and comment is a blessing because they all help us in our YouTube journey here, which ultimately want, we want to be able to turn into you know, an income enough again to just offset the cost of the rescue work and the animal stuff that we do here. So thanks to everyone who is a member. Uh, thanks to all the new members. And thank you in advance for those who will be joining um, at some point in the future. Uh, again, let me go back to my spreadsheet. So that was Weave at Weave's World. The Bud Files in the chat today, they are up to 1,080 something subscribers over last week. Hello, Karen Vasquez Woolcock. Okay, y'all, this is a new friend of mine from Lawyer You Know, a uh, longtime member of the chat over there. So very familiar to me and a friend of mine that I've made because of Peter Tragos. And I'm very honored to have you here today, Karen. Hello, Nora at the Stock Explorer. How are you? Oh my gosh, y'all, I'm so tickled. What a great chat we have going already. Um, so Bud Files, new content this week, and they're up in their subscriber count. And Dale Homestead, still tearing it up, y'all. Once upon a time, we were kind of in the same numbers category when I met her. Uh, and she just, the stuff I'm telling you, the stuff she shares on her channel is that amazing that she is seeing the kind of growth that she's seeing right now. So uh, you will benefit from hanging out at her channel. So so take me up on that challenge to go and check it out. She's at 7,330 something subscribers today. Uh, my new channel member and friend Eagles Trekker is down one, just one subscriber to 333. He hasn't posted anything in I think about eight days. Uh, so again, we, we just like to watch those patterns because they really can be uh, determining factors and in, in the rate at which your channel grows and how uh, far your reach can be with potential viewers. Um, my friend Laura at home at Hedgehog's Homestead is up to 1400. 10 something subscribers this week. Uh, our friend and channel member, Seth the Welsh, whom I know from the Late Late Horror Show, is holding on to his 55 subscriber count. Uh, not a lot of new content there in a while, so it's not a channel that he's really actively trying to grow, but I know it would be an encouragement for him for you to check it out and like, comment, and subscribe to uh, let him know that you're interested in what he has to offer. Uh, he does have a new video up in the last week. Uh, my friend Katie at Mayfield Ranch is up to 710 subscribers. My friend John at Home Bartending with John is up to 291 subscribers. Uh, my friend Stephen at Pawpaw's Kitchen up to 323 subscribers. Uh, my friend David Hunt, beautiful, talented, generous musician, uh, and Pianist is at 526 subscribers today. I just have to stop and say I'm so excited because there was so much more green this week even than there was last week. Um, and that just is very, um, but that's exciting for me. I'm very numbers driven. And uh, I know, again, it's not the only metric that any content creator should be looking at, but it's the easiest one to understand. Uh, and it's, I think, the easiest one to get excited about because other people can see that too. They can't see our watch hours. They can't necessarily see our total view counts and stuff like we can, but everyone can see your subscriber count. So uh, when people see you growing and they're not already channel members or subscribers, it kind of tickles the little curiosity button for them to say, wow, that channel, wow, they got more new subscribers every time I come and check them out. I guess I need to check them out more and see if I want to subscribe too. So uh, it can be a great driving force um, for all, all of us. So John is up to 291, Papa's Kitchen up to 323, David Hunt up to, uh, hang on, this, this is a message from Steve. So let me give him the rundown on how to get here. I'm going to send this link again since he sent a message. So give me a second. Oops, I got to get some light here.
Oh, the dogs hear like a jet going over and and Boone is getting scared. Okay, so I just sent him that message. Let's get this back off. It's too bright. Um, so oops. All right. Flannel Hill Farm up to 142 subscribers today. Let me get back to that screen over here. All right. Uh, and a uh, new friend and channel member, Paradox Fossils, up to 525. Nora the Stock Explorer has picked up at least 10 new subscribers in the last week. She's at 1,540-something. She is here today as well. Lots of fun. She does live streams several times a week. She uh, doesn't give you – how does it? How does she have to word that? So she shares information with us on stock trends and uh, what's, what's looking like a good – uh, choice right now and when it might be the best time to get rid of some stock. Uh, but I know she has to do a little disclaimer, you know, kind of like when a person comes on and says, this is not medical advice or this is not legal advice, it's, you know, so she has to do a thing like that, but she knows her stuff. So uh, if you just follow along with her, she can really help you learn about you know, how to buy and sell stocks, what to look for and what the different benefits are for some stocks. Like some have dividends, some don't have dividends. Some people like dividends, some people don't like dividends. I have Steve backstage in the green room now, so I will be bringing him up in just a second. Um, but let's move on with this right quick. Uh, our longtime channel member and friend LB at Woman Outdoors is up to 1,140 something subscribers today. My new friend Mark at Corner Clubhouse Cobalt is up to 1,070 subscribers today. Those were our channel members who also happen to have channels. So um, there are other channel members that aren't on this list because they don't have YouTube channels. They just have YouTube accounts so that they can, you know, like and comment and chat and uh, and support the channels that they like. Hello, Robin at What the Flock. How are you? Thank you for being here today. Uh, and then quickly, we'll run through our previous roundup guests that aren't channel members or aren't channel members yet. Um, Nick at Multi Hunter, Texas neighbor of ours is up to 642. He does have some new content up. I know you guys may remember that last week I told you I messaged him because I hadn't seen anything go up in a while. And I kind of, I go into mom mode and I worry that maybe something's happened. Uh, they were just taking a little break, but he has a new video up in this last week and they've gained some subscribers. Tiffany at Mud and Mascara is up to 417. This just in, Devin and Ryan at Our New Land, our Texas neighbors who are developing property in Oklahoma and have an amazing adoption story to share with the world, are at the 1,000 subscribers mark. Please go show them some love, show them some support. Let's help them hold on to that because it's not unusual for YouTube to take subscribers away if people do not continue to interact with the channel. And I would imagine they still need some watch hours. So pick a playlist from their channel and run it. You can just run it in the background. You do have to have the volume on at least a little bit for it to count, but you can open another tab then and do something else even if you need to, or plot, you know, start it up overnight before you go to bed. But congratulations to them. We've been watching for this number for at least a couple of months now. I've been watching for this number and telling you guys that we were close, but they have a nice big jump just in this last week and they are at that 1000 plus mark. Um, Jesse and Lisa, new channel members. Thank you, Jesse and Lisa. How exciting. Jesse is the uh, mod father for so many of us here on YouTube. He's moderating in my chat today. I have a couple of other moderators here today. I, I'm thankful for all of you. But Jesse just, uh, he is the king of that. And I'm so excited that you are a channel member with us now. Um, so thank you for that. Welcome. Welcome to that part of the family. Uh, they are down to 1,290 subscribers today. I'm going to guess it really only has to do with the fact that they've been traveling and on the road now for the last few weeks. And so there hasn't been as much of the other kinds of videos going out, making jelly and uh, recipes and things like they do so regularly and so beautifully. Uh, so I imagine when we talk next week, they will have gained all of that back and then some. 
my friend Ginger at Not For Nothing Homestead is at 700 subscribers this week. Uh, Robin at What The Flock, she is in the chat today. She is up to 426 subscribers this week. She did a live stream. Oh, I forgot to put your little new content thing up there. So she's uh, getting back into the swing of things as far as creating content and uh, going doing lives on YouTube. My friend Lee, wonderful, amazing, gifted musician across the pond in the UK, up to 1,060 subscribers today. Rich New Design, check this out, y'all. He has begun live streaming and posting videos again. Oh, we've been waiting since like November for that. He is up to 316 subscribers. Our friends Jeff and Lorena, uh, Texas neighbors at Back to Country Homestead, are down one subscriber to 548, but they do have a new video out in the last week. Our friends Ronnie and Brittany, California uh, friends of ours, um, they're still holding on to their 574 subscribers. They're doing some other family things, and they have a big Lufa Lady uh, show coming up, so they haven't had new content in a couple of weeks, uh, but that will be coming back soon. Uh, so they're holding on to 574. Ashley at CNC Farm, continuing to grow by leaps and bounds every week. She's up to three, 1,350 something subscribers this week. Uh, my friend Vicki Lund, uh, moderator in my channel, real life friend of mine because of YouTube. Uh, she is at 881 subscribers. Y'all, this is the next 1,000 that I'm really looking for to be show, sharing with you guys soon. So check her out. My friend Adam Sky. Uh, I do want to let you guys know his sister uh, was involved in an accident uh, and sustained a very, very serious head injury that resulted in significant brain damage. Uh, I have not received any kind of updates from him now in a couple of days, but uh, things are not good and it's very likely she's not with us anymore. So I just want to ask that you keep that family close to your heart. If you're a praying person, please say a prayer for her and for their family. Uh, they're devastated by what happened. It, it looks to be an accident, but no one uh, knows really what happened. So um, just be mindful of that and please, uh, again, lift them up however you can. And uh, if you get a chance, pop over to Adam's channel and find a way to leave him a little message. He does have a community post about that situation, and you can comment there uh, to let him know that you're thinking of him. Um, but he is up to 221 subscribers. Um, he's been very good about posting regular content. He's just kind of taking a little break right now because of what's happening with his family. Um, my friend Dino at the Late Late Horror Show is up another thousand this week, so uh, 101,000 plus subscribers today. My friend Dawn Ray B is at 434. That's what she was at last Friday. Jen and Steve at Good Times Homestead are up to 838. Nancy at Our Treasured Home is at 880. Uh, previous Fat Ninja DM, now Medium Ninja, is holding on to that 447. Safe and Sound Texas Audio Excursion, he's going to beat me to 2000, y'all. Who to thunk it? But check him out. A lot of fun stuff there. He's at 1,190 something subscribers. My friend Peter Trago said, Lawyer, you know, just look, he's just tearing it up, y'all. He's at 210 plus thousand subscribers uh, as of this morning. My friend Ralph at Webb's Web, who was in the chat. Uh, is up to 148 subscribers today. My friend um, um, Amanda at Bare Bones Living is at 641. Danielle at Danny Days Ahead is up to 737. John Pedroza, who is in the chat today, is up to, where did it, uh, 810. Hello, John. Uh, so there's another 1,000 that I'm, I'm hoping to announce for you guys very, very soon. Uh, my friend Angela at the Inquisitive Farm Wife, up to 1,420 something. Millionaire Paul, up to 222. My friend Tom Salta is still picking up some subscribers. Uh, he's at 790 today. We are at 1,951 as of, again, just a couple hours before showtime. Uh, my friend Marin at Palma, Palma Pioneer Pantry is up to 285. Sparrow Spalding up to 1,210. She sent me a draft of the fiction novel that she's writing. So I've got about the first third of it just to read it and give her kind of my take on it. I've only read the first few pages. I'm enchanted already. So uh, I'm going to be so excited when it gets to the point that that book is published and I can let you guys know that it's available. Um, 
Kenny and Debbie at the Adventures of Kenny and Debbie are up to 557. Bearded Eagle is at 938 today. Come hither with Heather on the show last week. Also from Australia, Steve, uh, is at 853 today. She's She's got the other videos out in that series of the beautiful abandoned houses that are about to be torn down. So check that out. It's such a lovely channel. Um, and then Steve Robson is in the green room. I'm going to bring him up now. He's holding on to 10 subscribers, but there's not been a lot of new current content going up. I'm hoping we can convince him to change that. But here you come, Steve. Make sure you're not blinking or sticking out your tongue or anything. And let morning, me, Kathy. Good morning. And let me take this down. How are you? I'm very good. Thank you. How are you? I'm good. And you're in Brisbane right i'm in yeah i'm in brisbane i'm, I'm originally from the uk um okay. and then emigrated to australia around five years ago i'm now okay. living in brisbane so you like it love it love the what, weather what, so, took you, what took you to australia then um nature so the outdoors so it's okay. very gray and cold in england right um australia is obviously a very different climate with a lot more outdoor activities and um family time outside so yeah that's why i came okay well i'm so tickled that you're here today so guys i've been following steve on facebook for a good while now and the first images i saw um are you in uh ant-man's hill or uh um one of the insect groups is that where i would have seen you first yeah i'm in i'm in a lot of insect groups so potentially um okay. I do follow quite a lot. So, yeah, I'm, I'm in quite a few of the Facebook so, insect groups. Yeah, so I think that's where I probably first saw some of your images is in one of these uh, entomology groups that I'm so um, much a fan of on Facebook. Um, and uh, I don't know if you have a way that you can show us any images here today. If not, I may, uh, on my community tab, grab some from your Facebook page or something and let people see a little more of your work. I shared, there was a little Christmas jumping spider that you digitally put a little hat and sweater on him. Yeah. Super, super yeah. cute. So I shared that at Christmas time. Just uh, and I think I told people at the time that I was going to be reaching out to you to see if you would be a guest on the show. Uh, just because I know those little images, I think they help. So people that have hangups about spiders, I think some of the images that you share help to help to take care of that. I think I really think it helps people let go of some of their apprehension, maybe when they can see the cute side of some of these uh, arthropods. I just, uh, I'm just fascinated by that. I don't, I don't know that I'll ever have a camera th I, th to take those kind of pictures. I'm always videoing. I'm a big spider fan. So I'm always videoing and handling the spiders that we find on the property here, but I can't get what I would call good images. Cause I just, all I have is my phone. But um, so uh, anyway, so I might share some images or if you want to uh, direct me at Facebook, maybe to some images that you'd like for me to share. Uh, then I'll share that and your website and uh, all the contact information for people. But today I just thought we would have fun getting to know you. I'm going to have fun getting to know you while we talk about your work. And then we'll move on after we talk about your work and the channel. We'll talk about you, just you, the just the Steve Robson that doesn't necessarily have to be the photographer person or. Uh, no problem. OK, that sounds so, great. The first question typically that I ask when I have guests on the show is what motivated you to start your YouTube channel? So I know it doesn't look like you're actively uploading to the channel. I would love to see you actively uploading to the channel because I would be there every day just drinking up what you're putting on the channel. But since you do have a channel and there are some videos there, what motivated you to start the channel? Yeah, I think originally, um, Obviously, most of my work's um, through Facebook, Instagram, um, where I share my photos. Um, I did dip my feet into YouTube and give it a try. Um, it's probably something that I'll go back to um, in the near future, just to do some tutorials around photography um, and editing after the photography. Um, but the main thing that I guess that got me into doing YouTube stroke Facebook was um, just sharing what the actual insects and look like close up um it probably started with me around five years ago i was i was really into photography but it was just really people and portraits um and animal photography like pets 
Um, and then when I'd moved to Australia, um, it was actually a jumping spider that I'd taken a close up picture of. I'd got myself a macro lens um, and took a picture of this jumping spider through the camera. You can't really see what it looks like. Um, but when it was blown up on screen, it was just, it was almost its own character. Huh. Um, so from th there, I just went down the route of trying to capture portraits of tiny, tiny animals. Um, and it just kind of really progressed from there. Um, and then the YouTube side, I guess, I, I attempted to do a tutorial. Um, and the problem with doing a tutorial was it took me away from doing some of the photographs and getting out and about in the wild. So I just need to find that balance of being able to do it efficiently and still being able to get out and about and go on nature walks and hikes, et cetera, et cetera. Right. So are you a, a bug lover? Do you, like, yeah, beyond I've capturing always, them on, on film, do you like to encounter insects and spiders and little critters? Yeah, absolutely. I've always been into nature. It started probably when I was younger. I was always fascinated by David Attenborough documentaries. Uh -huh. um, and I guess that's probably what led me into um, looking for bugs and <laughs> photographing bugs um and i've kept a whole host of bugs over the years i guess i've had things from um giant prickly stick insects to madagascan hissing cockroaches oh, okay. um so yeah i've, I've kind of kept a, a variety of exotic animals okay um of the smaller variety um much to the wife's dismay okay um, <laughs> yeah she's not as much of a bug lover as me so when i bring them home in the house yeah um they usually back out again quite quickly yeah, Richard is not, my husband is not the bug or little critter lover either. He loves the animals that we have here, but I have to do the snake wrangling if we have snakes in the duck and goose pen, and uh, I have to be the one to relocate spiders and stuff out of the house. That's just not his thing. Um, and I wanted to say some hellos right quick. Hello to Gallivanting Galantes. How are you? Hello to Templin Acres. How are you? I'm so tickled to see you guys here today. Um, and just uh, just since, and hello, Betty J. Gathers. How are you? I'm behind in the chat, y'all. And since uh, Jesse and Lisa just became channel members, I did want to let you guys know that I just put up, I think it's, I think it's public now, uh, my rehearsal and recording session for a cover song that will go live. It'll premiere on the channel on the 15th. I have two other cover songs that are going to premiere before that date, but I thought, well, you know what? Let me just share what, what happens when I'm getting ready to record these covers. So you're just going to see the raw video. You're not even going to hear really the raw audio because you'll hear the audio through the um this studio mic here this uh shotgun mic but believe it or not i don't get as good a sound when i record on Streamyard that way i have to record with a voice recorder on my other phone um and i just thought maybe y'all would enjoy that so then when you see the finished video you can compare uh how it sounds when i've added the reverb and stuff like that to it but uh, just trying to find new things to share. It's a members only thing. And that's why I brought that up. So Jesse, you'll have to check that out and tell me what you think. Um, and so now back to Steve. So do you have anyone who helps you with the channel? Anyone that helps with the filming or, or taking the photos or do you develop your own pictures or is everything yeah. digital now? Yeah, everything's, it's a real digital world now. So um, the process I guess I've got is, um, I'll just go on general walks, so be that with the family or myself. I've usually got my camera there, um, and if I see anything um, insect-wise or animal-wise, I'll normally take a picture, um, and I'll normally do that on one day of the week um, and usually come back with around a 1,000 photos. Um, from there, I kind of upload them on my computer probably one day the following week, wow. um, sift through and just find out maybe it's the best three. Wow. Um, and then, yeah, just upload to the computer. I go through the editing process, um, which consists of really a little bit of editing in Lightroom. Um, and then there's an element of digital painting in Photoshop um, just to create kind of a painterly portrait. But no, nobody really helps me with the, the process apart from being there when I'm taking the photos. Okay. Um, yeah, and the edits take anywhere from um an hour to three hours usually per picture um wow. so yeah there's quite a lot involved in them probably more than what it looks of just the post oh, yeah i'm i'm amazed already so did you study like 
digital photography or uh, editing uh, Photoshop and stuff like that? Or is this something that you've taught yourself over time? Yeah, self-taught. So I, I think it really probably 15 years ago, I just bought myself a camera to take family pictures. Um, and then it just gradually developed. And then YouTube came onto the scene and was a big factor in um, self-teach. Uh -huh. um and there's a there's a popular youtuber um that specializes in um kind of photoshop um and lightroom um and he's called pix and perfect if anybody wants to check him out um really good really really good thorough tutorials um so it, he's got a real unique style of just slowing it down and walking you through step to step of something as complex as photoshop okay um and yeah that just really helped and then from there i just built my own style and create my own um type of art i guess just to to capture insects um a little bit differently to what you see on the floor when you people are normally stepping on them. right right again that's why i said i think it helps if they see the cuteness if they see the beauty that you can capture by looking at them up close i like to think it helps overcome some of the some of the hang-ups and some of the negative you know impressions people have of of a lot of the bugs and spiders yeah and it's it's had a some of the groups i'm in actually around facebook are um uh, kind of spider phobia groups where people are afraid of spiders um and a lady from there reached out to see if she could use the photos and get me interacting with some of the people just to try and get them over the fear of spiders so it was quite um quite a unique um facebook group to go into um but yeah it did help especially with some of the jumping spiders because they've got their own unique face and personalities i guess when you look at them um each one's slightly different and each one acts slightly different um and i think it's a bit of a misconception um especially me coming to australia i thought there'd be snakes all over and spiders all over and um you'd get bites and you'd have to be really careful so we came equipped with snake bandages and anti-bite um and through all my time kind of here handling spiders and photographing them um i've never been bitten once um even though they all do bite and even jumping spiders can bite and they just leave a tiny red mark if they do uh -huh. but they're usually so inquisitive and they just want to get away from you most of the time uh -huh. that i've really never encountered anything that's wanted to bite in australia yeah. Apart from mosquitoes, if I could get rid of mosquitoes, that'd be my one. Yeah, and that's what all of us, yeah. We're in Texas. Now, we're, I'm sure the mosquito problem is probably worse for like my friends Jesse and Lisa, who are down near Houston, just because they're so close to the ocean. But even here, it, it can be a really uh, nightmarish problem. The mosquitoes are relentless but uh interestingly enough i'm i'm not bitten very often by mosquitoes at all so i can be outside with other people that are just miserable because they're just being eaten alive by the mosquitoes and for every you know 100 bites they get i might get one mosquito bite so i don't know if it's my blood type or yeah. the soap i use or what and the same here about being bitten so i've handled so many spiders and snakes in my life i've been bitten one time by a rat snake uh and if i had not seen him bite me though i wouldn't even have known he did it so i saw him do it and then there was a little bit of blood but the teeth are so small he was and he would just wanted to get away he just wanted to get away from me uh so i i you know i guess i'm either lucky or stupid or some combination of the two and tell us again what the name of the channel is that you said is great for tutorials on like photoshop and stuff and i'll see if one of my moderators can uh maybe find that link it's pix imperfect okay pix imperfect yeah okay all one word okay so maybe uh jesse i think john i just made you a channel uh, moderator as well uh, i think vicky lund is still here if one of you guys might could see if you can find that uh a channel link for pix imperfect here on youtube uh i think i saw someone say maybe john said he thought that would be interesting to check that channel out so um back to my questions so i take it photography is your day job that's how you earn a living no, I do something completely separate. I actually run a retail business oh, um, for my full-time job. Um, 
<laughs> so yeah, I guess that's the reason why it's it's a once per week type of thing. So my that's photos nice. are normally done in one day. The editing's usually done the following week after. So my posts tend to come in groups. Okay. Um so for anybody who kind of follows me on Facebook, it's normally um over the course of three days, I'll put up out around 10 posts of insects. Uh-huh. Um, it's not that all the insects suddenly converge in one place at one time. It's just that <laughs> over the course of a couple of weeks, I'll capture them insects on my days off. Okay. Um, but yeah, um, so the insect part is probably a one day a week thing just when I'm going on hikes. Um, the business part of my photography is usually the pet photography um, and then occasional family photography. Okay. Um, but I much prefer animals than people. Um, so I just get them to kind of act a little bit easier and it's a little bit easier to photograph and then you don't get all the all the comeback at the end of the photogra- photography right. session. So, <laughs> right. Yeah. I prefer people definitely to animals. But no, my full time job is um yeah, in, in retail. So it's um I run a store just close to Brisbane Airport. Um yeah, and that consumes most of my working week. Okay. And hello to Andale Homestead. How are you? Good to see you today. Um, so when you're not taking photographs or managing your retail business, what do you like to do? Do you have any other like downtime and you like to do something then completely different from all of those things? Yeah, we do it. a lot of outdoor activities. So because there's so many beaches and creeks and streams and um rainforest round and about it's um a lot of taking the kids kayaking in the in the creeks or at the beach um we're kind of sur- we're lucky as well because we're, we're surrounded by some islands um that are a 10 minute ferry right right away so we normally just set up for the day take a few beach umbrellas and a picnic and then head over to the islands just to relax for the day okay um and then i guess brisbane's got its own version of um disney world so it's a uh, it's a place it's very similar. So it's ten minutes down the road. So we've got that there on the doorstep as well, and Sea World and um, the usual big attraction park. So it's almost like a, a mini a mini kind of Florida stroke California. Okay. Um, from a tourist point of view, um, but yeah, there's just lots of the thing that attracted me to Brisbane is the Daintree Rainforest is around four hours um, up the coast, and that's the oldest rainforest. Um, in the world it's a couple of hundred million years old Um, and then just an hour's drive from that is the Great Barrier Reef Um, so we're kind of surrounded luckily by thousands and millions of insects so there's no end of um, things to photograph for me Um, so it keeps me very interested and engaged Um, whereas in the likes of the UK it's a little bit more difficult because the weather's the weather's a lot colder uh-huh. um however saying that there's still jumping spiders in the uk um and there's once you start looking you, half of them you don't see you, uh-huh. you just come across them and uh um there's thousands and they're everywhere and they're in your house and they're in your garden um so yeah it's just that the nature my days offer nature out and about spending time with the family um and then yeah the rest of it's work and photography Okay, so the rainforest there, how did that fare through the fires that we all heard about? Yeah, so the, the Dane tree was good because that's, um, that's in kind of tropical far north Queensland um, where it's a, it's a lot more humid, um, there's a lot more rain. Um, so the, the ground's very damp. Um, the fires were mainly where we are. Um, the bushlands, you can probably see some in the background. Uh-huh. Um that gets very dry so it can get very dry over kind of two or three days um and then it just takes it just takes a glass bottle or a a cigarette stub or something like that to be thrown in the dry bush and it just ignites the whole lot um luckily this year we've been fortunate we've had a mixture of um rain every week so it's rained every week just to keep the the ground damp um but yeah the Dane tree was unaffected it was mainly further south of in brisbane that was affected by the bushfires okay and children how many children do you have i've got two boys so okay. two boys are eight, eight and ten okay um, oh, they're still fun then for yeah they so, can take care so, of themselves for the most part but they're fun to take out then fun and trouble oh. at times but yeah. <laughs> yeah you have that to take are. the bad with the good you got to take that's, the bad with the good that's it um but yeah the, the two boys are inquisitive as well they're into um 
they've got some little shrimp tanks set up at the moment. So uh, neocardinia shrimp. So they're trying to breed them into different colours and do a bit of experimentation. So I think I've rubbed off on them a little bit with the insect world and the wildlife world, which is good. Sweet. Um, do you have pets? I do. I've got um, two dogs. So we've got two Shih Tzus, okay. um, a black one and a white one. Um, and then we've just got a fish tank. So unfortunately, no bugs. I'm not allowed any bugs. I think <laughs> my family yeah. keeping them has came and gone. Yeah, my little menagerie here, I'm missing a snake and a tarantula, but my husband will not let me add those to the to the collection. So, yeah. um, so what are your chance? Do you, do you have plans rather for your YouTube channel? Is it something you'd like to find time? I know you talked about just figuring out a balance between uh, everything else that's going on in your life, but do you one day see the channel as being something where you would more regularly upload your work or? Yeah, I definitely think I will. Um, it's just something that um, I tend to flip between projects. I've got um, my photography all kind of, tech front stage for maybe two three months um and then i'll need a break and then i'll go and do a different project for two to three months and kind of research it find out how to perfect it and how to do it and then i'll really delve into that so it just seems to be where my interest lies at the time but i think photography is probably getting to that stage now where i just need a little bit of a break from it so i'll take a bit of downtime and then maybe go into into the tutorial world and developing some of them um and my thought process i guess around it is to incorporate that into a bush walk taking the picture um so that you get the whole journey really of how to do macro photography uh -huh. and then how to take it back into the studio and develop it and edit it um and then apply your own technique so it doesn't look the same as everybody else right um so that's kind of my initial thought around what i'm going to do with it um, now, do, just, do you take videos also or only photographs? Yeah, I do. I do take videos on my walk. So most of the insects that I actually take a photo of, I will take a, a video of as well, because some of them are post to entomology sites. Uh -huh. um, and the different some of the sites want just the picture of the insect when it's fully done. Um, the entomology sites tend to like the picture from side on top down oh, right. um, and then a video of its actual behaviors in the wild so i tried to capture that from a documentation point of view as well right so and just so a a, a tip that the people that enjoy you know bugs and spiders and things you could just upload those raw videos to your youtube channel and i think people would just have a great time just watching those wouldn't even have to edit anything necessarily. Just upload it. And we like seeing, I like seeing the bugs and spiders in the wild too, doing their thing and get all the different angles. So just for what it's worth, when you get ready to be on YouTube a little more frequently, those would be great videos, I think, to share with everybody. Yeah, fantastic. I need, I need all the tips I can get with YouTube. So YouTube's obviously not my forte at the moment, but well, I will I know, try and I will so, try and learn. Kevin at All Bugs Go to Kevin has a YouTube channel and he doesn't have a lot of content there. And some of it's only a minute or two long. And that's what it is. It's just the, the close up video of the bugs being bugs and the spiders being spiders. And I just think it's interesting. A lot of those things, uh, some people will never see. You talked about the hissing cockroaches. So I've never seen one live and in person. I just see them when people share images and videos. Uh, on YouTube or Facebook or someplace else on the internet. So uh, it's just a nice, fun way, I think, for people to experience those kind of creatures without having to deal with the, you know, heebie-jeebies they might get if they were to actually see it in person for themselves. So again, just a little tip there that I'll be ready to watch those videos if you want to put those on your channel. Yeah, that'd be great. I'll, I'll get on to it. So I'll keep you posted on it. Okay. So I'll, I'll aim for mid-June. I'll aim to get a video up there mid-June, full tutorial. That'll be my commitment to you. Perfect. Perfect. Um, so um, let me, I'm going down my list of questions. Anything else you want us to know about the photography work you do? No, I think, like I said, it's just for me, it's raising an awareness of of wildlife and nature. It's really just putting it out there, just so people see a different side of what's around them. And um, 
I think it's it's just more of protecting what we've got. So I think that's my that's the kind of thing that burns in me. We've got a beautiful place that we live, um, and just so much of it's been destroyed. Um, and I even see around me, kind of where we live now, there's a lot of bushland, but a lot of it's been taken over by housing development. Um, yeah, and I just think it needs a bit more awareness, really. Of it. It's not just the big things that we're that we're kind of destroying; it's all the small things as well. And even in the short time I've been here over the kind of past five years or so, there's been insects that I've seen when I first came to they're just not they were there for the first two or three years, um, and now they're just not not readily available anymore. So there's just um, yeah, there's a lot of things we can do better. Um, and I think if my photography raises a bit of awareness in that and gives people a different perspective on insects and bugs, then great. I've done what I can. Beautiful. Um, and I'll, yeah, I'll keep trying. Beautiful. I love that. Uh, and so, and so chat, uh, let me say hello to Cassie at Forensic Mystics. Hello. Uh, if I've missed anyone, my apologies. Hello. I'm so happy to see all of you here. Crafty Annie, I hope you're feeling better today. It's so good to have you here today. And I, uh, Crafty Annie said hi to you, Steve. I don't know that you can see the little comments I put up on the screen, but, uh, you got a hello from her when she came in. I'm sure other people may have done that too, but uh, it's sometimes hard to keep up with the chat and keep up with the conversation. So I miss some things from time to time. Um, traveling. So I know that's a long way to go from the UK to Australia, but have you traveled any farther than that? Yeah. So um, we've been to the main places I've probably been. We've been to Egypt, Mexico. We've been to America a few times. Um and then, yeah, I guess the next 10 years is probably going to be made up of traveling Australia and the different parts of that because it's such a, such a big country with so much to see. So, yeah, that'll consume us for the probably the next 10 years of holidays and road travel and road trips. Um, and we're thinking about getting a caravan that we can take with us. So we'll just do road trips up the coast and around okay. Australia. Okay. Um, so, yeah, that's the long term. And then eventually we will get back over to the US. On your channel. People eat yep. that up. People eat that up. The road trip stuff and van life stuff and camping and outdoor stuff. There's all kinds of things you could. I'm excited about your channel even more now. <laughs> so uh, since you've done a lot of traveling, do you have a favorite place in the world that you have visited? So far? Um, I, I actually like Egypt um, just because of the the history. I'm quite interested in the pyramids and the the, the kind of real old, old stuff um but yeah it's, it's got a bit of a fascination because I, I don't think egypt and the kind of culture and how it came to be is fully understood yet i think there's a lot more to it um and there's there's other areas like turkey so it's a bit more of the unusual places probably not related to bugs but it's um yeah there's areas like gebekli tepe in turkey that i'd like to go and see as well okay. um just some of the older historical sites so i think outside of bugs then there's a little bit of history that's in there mixed with a little bit of space exploration as well. So okay. it's um, a real random mix of different things that I'm kind of interested in. Oh, that keeps life interesting. It does. Absolutely. 100%. That's, that, I, I, I feel bad for people that only have the one thing that's their thing and they don't even know all the other amazing, wonderful things that they could be experiencing. So uh, I think that's great. Um, do you consider yourself more of an introvert or an extrovert? Uh, introvert 100 percent. so yeah in in my job i've got got to mix so i, I flip to in, a little bit of extrovert in my job obviously dealing with people and customers right. um but yeah in in my life it's it's definitely an introvert I've, i enjoy my own quiet time and just get my head down and getting out in nature walks so yeah 100 percent introvert but can flick to extrovert if i need to and do you consider yourself more artistic or more analytical uh, definitely artistic. Okay. And um, I'm not surprised. Yeah. I'm not surprised by either of those answers for sure. Um, I just yeah. finished reading a book and I was intrigued by one of the concepts in the book because uh, this main character who's a man at the, at the time the book is happening, but he's thinking back to when he was a child. And so he's very interested in photography. He's a lawyer now. So he didn't get to follow his dream and become a photographer, but he still likes taking pictures and he has a lot of cameras. And, um, and he's, there's one passage in the book about when he was a little boy and his grandparents got him a camera for Christmas. I think I, I want to say, he said he's like eight years old or so. And, 
And the way he described it was, you know, that he as he's looking through the at the world through the camera, it took away some of the um, I guess he was kind of an introvert, too. And so it was like his way to experience everything and not feel uh, like an introvert because he's like right there in it because he's looking at it through his camera and that made it more comfortable for him. And I thought, wow, wow. I never thought of that. I never thought of yeah, that. Yeah, and it's prob probably true. There's probably an area of separation that you can have by looking looking at things through a lens. Um, it does take you a, yeah, away a little bit. But I do like to come from behind the lens and just kind of see what's what's really out there as well. So sometimes I'll just put the camera away and just go on walks for the sake of it. Um, well, but it's hard because uh, I don't know that you would have agreed to be on the show if if it was really too uncomfortable for you to be without a camera in front of you. So yeah, I'm, no, I'm grateful for that. Um, if you were famous, what would you be famous for? Um, probably conservation. Okay, I'd like to be oh, famous for conservation. Just yeah, keep protecting my own little area of the world. That I meant. I love so, it. That's great. Do you watch much on YouTube? Are you on YouTube a lot besides watching the Pix Imperfect or those kind of tutorial type channels? Yeah, always. Um, I think it's uh, anything I need to do, whether it fix a pipe, um, do something else. I, I just watch the tutorials on YouTube. There's so many great people on there that it's, um, yeah, you don't really need universities. Now I think it's the University of YouTube. You can learn whatever you need to. Right. Um, you can get into any type of hobby you want. Um, I just think it's great. It's a, it's a great platform to use it um, to learn new things. And do you watch much television? Uh, no, hardly any. Wow. I'll watch, I, um, know, it's such a trend. I've, I've met a lot of people interviewing uh, content creators and uh, professionals on the on my live stream here and i just can't uh, i can't even think of anyone who has answered that question yes when i ask do you watch a lot of tv or do you now may, they may have some favorite shows from certain times in their lives or something that they watch every now and then but no one has just come right out and said oh i watch tv all the time no one has told me that and i just wonder what message yeah there's a message there for some of the the networks and the, the TV people, if if that many people that I just happen upon don't even really watch television anymore. So uh, so I'm not surprised by that answer either. Um, do you have any uh, videos or projects in the works right now? Do you have a thousand pictures that you still need to go through and edit and uh, prepare for sharing? Yeah, I think, I think currently I've got a backlog of 12,000 pictures that I need oh to um, keep scrolling through. So normally the pictures I post are, are roughly from around three, four months prior. Oh my um, goodness. So I'm gradually working through that backlog. I know there's some good ones in there that I need to get to. So yeah, that'll be my task. Um, but I'll probably kind of, yeah, through this, I'll probably drift out and do a little bit of a a tutorial think about. So I might go and do one of those bush walks over the next couple of weeks and see what that comes out like um yeah okay and so here's another another little bit of encouragement for you live streaming on youtube is a great way to engage and bring more people in so again i'm there if you do it doesn't matter what time of day if you can go out and do a bushwalk and you want to live stream it i'll be there watching so keep that in mind, too, if that's something. And you can stay behind the camera so you don't have to be like we are now where you're facing the camera. Uh, in fact, just so Jesse and Lisa just Jesse and Lisa in my chat today just did a big road trip up to the Pacific Northwest and and back and had, had video from the road. They're on the camera a lot because they're comfortable with that and they're used to that. But a lot of what we saw was just the camera at the front of the car there. And we see the mountains and the highway and. Uh, the roadside attractions and things. So you can do live streams even, and we don't even have to see your face. You can just be showing us what you're looking at. And I just, I would be all over that. I would just be so excited to see that kind of stuff too, because I've never been to Australia. So there's lots of things I think you could share with us and take us along on your bushwalks. And when you go to SeaWorld or the rainforest or wherever, places that a lot of us, maybe some of y'all in the chat has seen some of these things, but Unless I see somebody share it on a video, I've never I've never seen them. So 
uh, again, yeah, was, just sharing that out there for you in case you need some ideas. So tell us about the other social media uh, platforms that you're on and how to how to find you. Um, I think my social media platform is it's ninety percent Facebook, so I know it's an unusual one to kind of use. It's just um, it's just an easy easy platform for me to link into different insect groups and um they're all kind of one content ecosystem if you like whereas instagram's um it's moved away a little bit from um photography instagram's very much based on reels um and the, the shorter videos which i don't do as much so yeah i'm primarily now um just just on facebook just on the um steve robson photography at facebook okay so if you guys are Facebookers, check out Steve Robson Photography on Facebook. That's where I met Steve was at Facebook. Uh, for if you came in late in the stream, uh, he shares a lot of insect photos in some of the insect groups that I'm in on Facebook. Uh, and the pictures are just so captivating to me. So I had to go over and give him a follow on Facebook so I wouldn't miss anything that, you know, maybe he wasn't sharing on the insect pages. Um, uh, and do you have any questions? You have any questions for me? You have any questions? I don't know. Any more no, questions about YouTube? Yeah, thank you or... for, just thank you for having me on the podcast, Kathy. It's been it's been great. It's been my first one, actually, first podcast that I've been on. Um, you, you seem very comfortable, so I hope it hasn't been a, a nerve wracking experience for you. No, it's been great. Okay. It's been great. But yeah, I think from here I'm back off to work this afternoon. So, um, and then it's my day off the next two days. So okay. my next two days I'll be out and about getting a few more pictures and um, yeah, probably do a bit of kayaking with the boys. But yeah, I'll definitely look into over the next few weeks and getting that YouTube video out. Oh gosh. Um, I'll drop you a link to it and then you'll have to do a bit of um, do a bit of check and see how it came out. Awesome. And then the last question I like to ask of my guests, it's just one to get your brain fired up. You're stranded on a desert uh, island. Uh, granted, you're on an island, but let's say you're on an, it's not Australia. You're stranded on a, de a desert, uh, deserted island. What three things do you want to have with you? Um, definitely my camera. <laughs> I probably need to take a PC to do some editing. Um, maybe it's a solar panel. You can group <laughs> so those together. You can, you can group the camera and the PC together. So we'll count That's that it. as one of the three. Um, yeah, and then then I'd, if I could squeeze my family there, I'd squeeze my family across as okay. well. Yeah, that's so, yeah, probably. Yeah. Um, and then beyond that, I don't know, maybe it's a little kayak so I could get out on the boat and do a bit of traveling. Okay. I love it. I love it. Thank you so much for being here today. This was such Not a treat. I was so excited when you said you'd do it. And I couldn't find an email for you. And all I had was the, you know, I think I had messaged you and then I put the little comment under one of the pictures. Hey, I messaged you to get you on my podcast. So thank you for responding right away and for agreeing to be on the show. This was a treat for me. I'm going to be excited to see new content go up on your YouTube channel. I'm going to be excited still for all the new content I see going up at Facebook uh, from you. Chat, please uh, check him out. Uh, Steve Robson Photography here on YouTube and at Facebook. Um, I, see, again, if you start seeing people checking out the videos you have on YouTube, that might be a little more motivation than to put up some new stuff every now and then. Yeah, I dread to think what they look like. So that was that must have been a good few years ago. I posted yeah, that one on there. So yeah, yeah best of it. I bet putting you one on there. I am hoping to find some new stuff soon. Thank you again for being here today. Have a lovely rest of the day today. It's Saturday where he is already, guys. Thanks for getting up early to be. Well, maybe you get up at this time anyway. I'm not a morning person, so this would be early. Your time now would be very early for me. So I'm very thankful that you were willing to get up and uh, be a part of my stream today. No, no problem. Thank you for having me, Thank Kathy. It's been a Steve. pleasure. Yes, be blessed. Take care. And uh, I'll be looking for you here on YouTube. You too. Thank you. Thanks, Bye. <laughs> Bye. What a fun interview, guys. Okay, you guys have to check that out. So, And you know I'm a bug lover. So uh, I'm excited that he's my first bug lover uh, and bug photographer. And when I say bugs, again, I do mean spiders and insects. Spiders are not insects, but bugs is a nice collective term for all of the little creepy crawlies that, uh, again, some people have a lot of hangups about, but I love them. I consider them uh, 
nature's jewelry. It, God created jewelry by putting bugs on the planet. And if you if you study them enough and watch for them enough, you really will see some that look like jewelry. There are uh, those scarab beetles and things that are the iridescent multicolors. And uh, again, spider eyes. Someone made a, a comment in the chat about uh, looking at spiders eyes. Gosh, y'all, it's just, it's so perfectly detailed and intricate. It's, uh, I just really think that they were put here for our enjoyment. I, you know, not everybody enjoys them, but uh, check out the photos. So Steve is offering you a service. If you have hangups about bugs and spiders, you can see them in a new way and just maybe gain an appreciation for just how, again, beautifully detailed and intricate and perfect they are just the way they look. You don't have to touch them or anything. You just can look at the pictures. So please check him out. Uh, show him some love. And who did I see? Dancing Alone with Reynolds. Thank you for being here today. Um, and so that, again, that was Steve Robson from Steve Robson Photography. Uh, we shared our channel updates. I want to do a little um, on this day stuff for you guys. We'll do some um, did you knows we'll spin for our channel of the week. Uh, and then we've got, so we've got a house full of dogs right now. There's our three. There's always our three. We have two boarding with us until Sunday. We have our regular boarder here today that comes a uh, couple of times a week. And then this afternoon, excuse me. So this afternoon, all of those dogs will still be here. Right after the stream, two other dogs are going to come. These are longtime repeat boarders that will be here about 4.15 today. And they'll be with us until next Friday. And then Sunday little MJ. Some of you guys may remember little MJ who has stayed with us several times. I've posted several videos about her on the channel because she's super cute. She's a little pocket shepherd. She's a shepherd husky mix. Her mom is a full-blooded German shepherd. Her dad was a full-blooded husky mix. Uh, this was a litter of puppies that was unwanted. Uh, some of them passed away because they weren't being cared for and Good Shepherd Rescue took them in. Of course, they were adopted right away because they're so precious and they were puppies. And sometimes people, uh, you know, feel better about getting a puppy so they can train it like they want. I like getting an, a grown up dog already so that we don't have to go through the whole potty training thing and all that. But uh, so MJ is going to be here on Sunday. So, but the other two girls will still be here for a little while on Sunday. So we will have a house full for sure on Sunday. Um, and then when the two girls go home, it'll be more like a normal boarding thing. And Gucci won't be here on Sunday because Gucci's not here on Saturdays or Sundays, but um, that's what's happening here. Uh, so on this day, uh, first entry in the on this day, uh, on the on this day calendar is on this day in the year 241 BC. Okay. That might be the oldest one I've shared with you guys. I wonder how this was recorded, but on this day in 241 BC, First Punic War, Battle of the Agates Islands. The Romans sink the, Carthagin the Carthaginian fleet, bringing the First Punic War to an end. Wow. And then on this day in 418, so that's the next entry, Jews are excluded from public office in the Roman Empire. Interesting. Uh, and then there's a bit of a jump. The next one on the list in on this day in 1198, the Giralda Minaret designed by architect Ben Ahmad for the Almohad Mosque in Seville is completed. Now the bell tower for Seville's Cathedral. So obviously there is a Seville's Cathedral in Seville that has origins back to the year 1198. Uh, let's jump ahead. On this day in 1697, Tsar Peter the Great of Russia begins a tour of Western Europe. And then on this day in 1734, Spanish army under Don Carlos III draws into Naples. 
On this day in 1783, USS Alliance under Captain Barry fights and wins last naval battle of U.S. Revolutionary War off Cape Canaveral. On this day in 1801, the first, uh, first official census in Great Britain, revealing a population of approximately 10 million. 10 million people in Great Britain in 1801. Hello, Nina and Boyce at Rooted in Texas. How are you? Uh, on this day in 1847, the first money was minted in Hawaii. On this day in 1849, Abraham Lincoln applies for a patent. He's the only U.S. president to do so. There's an FYI in with this, did you know? I mean, it's on this page. I didn't know that already. So FYI to me. Uh, uh, Abraham Lincoln applies for a patent for a device to lift a boat over shoals and obstructions. Any boaters out there that know what that device is or was or what it's called? On this day in 1864, Red River Campaign begun in Louisiana by Union forces. On this day in 1874, Purdue University in Indiana admits its first student. On this day in 1876, the first telephone call, Alexander Graham Bell says, Mr. Watson, come here. I want to see you to his assistant, Thomas Watson, on this day in 1876. Isn't that exciting? On this day in 1893, New Mexico State University cancels its first graduation ceremony. It's only grand, gradu and graduand, G-R-A-D-U-A-N-D. There's a word I've never seen before. It's only graduand Sam Steele was robbed and killed the night before. On this day in 1893, they canceled their graduation ceremony because the only graduand. I'll have to look at that. I guess it means like a graduate or uh, anticipated graduate, expected graduate, but maybe because he didn't graduate because he passed away. He's a graduand. New word. Uh, on this day in 1900, Stanley Cup, Montreal Arena, Westmount, Quebec, Montreal Shamrocks, outclass Halifax Crescents, 11 to nothing to sweep Challenge Series 2-0. and oh. On this day in 1902, a United States Court of Appeals rules that Thomas Edison did not invent the movie camera. I didn't know anybody thought he did. It's called a portage. That The device that lifts boats is called a portage. Thank you, Crafty Annie. My village here. Okay, let's get back to on this day. Let's jump ahead a little. On this day in 1927, Albania mobilizes due to threats from the Kingdom of Serbs, Croats, and Slovenes. On this day in 1927 also, Bavaria lifts ban on Adolf Hitler's speeches. Uh, and then on this day in 1934, U.S. Men's Figure Skating Championship was won by Roger Turner. I encourage you guys to check out this onthisday.com page because there's pictures. I guess I could just have this on the screen over there. Do you guys want to see it? It's harder for me to read it over there when I share it that way, but let's try it. Because there, then there's pictures. Um, on this day in 1939, 17 villages damaged by hailstones in Hyderabad, India. Let's skip a little. On this day in 1945, George S. Patton's 3rd U.S. Army makes contact with General Courtney Hodge's 1st U.S. Army. What does that mean, makes contact? What does that mean, they make contact? On this day in 1945, Germany blows up Wessel Bridge on the Rhine. Oh, so these are all 1945. Here, well, let's do this other 1945 one then. On this day in 1945, Field Marshal Albert Kesselring, Kesselring succeeds Gerd von Rundstedt as commander of German Army Command in the West. Photographs and everything. Check it out. Uh, also on this day in 1945, Japan grants occupied Vietnam independence. And also on this day in 1945, U.S. troops land in western Mindano, Philippines in Operation Victor 4. Scoot, scoot, scoot. 
On this day in 1959, Dorothy Comiskey Rigney sells her 54% share of Major League Baseball Chicago White Sox to Bill Veek for a reported $27 million. In 1959, in 1959, it was sold for $27 million. I don't know where you go. Hey, Schultze, how are you? I don't know where you go to convert like with inflation over time like 27 million in 1959 is worth what today what would that translate to today there's a there's a project for you guys i just know it's a lot of money even today that's a lot of money uh on this day well there was something with elizabeth taylor on this day in 1960 the 17th golden globes ben hur anthony franciosa and elizabeth taylor win Lots of sports stuff. On this day in 1967, I Never Loved a Man the Way I Love You, American singer Aretha Franklin's 10th overall studio album and first on Atlantic Records is released. Also, let's see, on this day in 1970, Barbara Streisand records The Singer and I Can Do It. On this day in 1973, the 20th ACC Men's Basketball Tournament, North Carolina State beats Maryland 76-74. to 74. On this day in 1973, Morocco adopts a constitution. On this day in 1975, John Lennon releases single Stand By Me, a cover of Ben E. King's song from 1961. Oh, a television premiere. On this day in 1978, The Incredible Hulk, starring Bill Bixby as David Banner, premieres on CBS. I watched that show. I loved that show. Who else? Raise your hand. Uh, Crafty Eddie says those two uh, those two military guys met in the middle. Let's see. We'll skip a little more. On this day in 1982, U.S. President Ronald Reagan proclaims economic sanctions against Libya. On this day in 1985, Dallas Maverick coach Dick Mata is the fourth NBA coach to win 700 games. I don't think anybody's held that kind of record up have they on this day in 1988 avalanche at swiss ski resort Klosters nearly kills prince charles i didn't remember that on this day in well i guess we could just look at the pictures but there's just so much in the pictures it's like all movie stars and stuff uh, on this day in 1991 rock for the rainforest benefit concert held at carnegie hall new york city Performers include Sting, Elton John, Gilberto Gill, Antonio Carlos, Hobim, and Catano Veloso. Anybody keep up with those guys? On this day in 1992, Sixth Soul Train Music Awards, Natalie Cole, Color Me Bad, win. On this day in 1996, People Choice, People's Choice Awards. At the 22nd People's Choice Awards, Tom Hanks and Demi Moore with Dramatic Motion Picture and Tim Allen and Candace Bergen win for TV. I don't want to just do, oh, look, there's so many. Let's just scoop, skip ahead anyway. Um, on this day in 2010, Carlos Slim becomes the first Mexican and person from an emerging economy to top Forbes' richest persons list with net worth of 53.5 billion with a b dollars i can't even process those kind of numbers for anything when you're talking about all the stars in the sky or you know different species of of roaches or whatever i can't process those kind of numbers i have no point of reference to understand that kind of a number. I seem to remember reading or hearing once upon a time that to count to 1 billion, maybe I'm remembering it wrong, no one could even live long enough to count to a billion. Somebody fact checked that for me. Maybe it wasn't a billion. Maybe it was a trillion or some other bigger number. But since the time I heard that, which I mean, that would have been, I would have heard that like when I was 10 years old which is why I might not be remembering it correctly, but that's part of why I can't really process that. I can't, I don't know what to do with numbers that have billion after them because I, you know, I mean, we have, we have a flock of 30 water birds. That's a lot of animals. <laughs> I think we have 43 animals altogether. That's a lot of animals. So we're already looking at big numbers when I'm talking about those kind of things. Um, 
on this day in 2017, South Korean judges uphold Parliament's decision to impeach President Park Goon Hee. Didn't remember that. Hmm. On this day in, in 2020, New York Governor Andrew Cuomo deploys the National Guard to New Rochelle after one mile radius zone established as 108 cases of COVID-19 detected. New Rochelle, isn't that where Rob and Laura Petrie lived? How, how am I connecting New Rochelle with the Dick Van Dyke Show? Hey, Ashley at CNC Farm, did I already say hi to you? Oh, okay, you just got here. I'm glad you're here. It, there's no, there's no rule. It's a come and go. It's a come and go stream. Uh, on this day in 2020, also, Russian lower house of parliament passes legislation to allow Vladimir Putin to hold office of president for life. That just seems kind of foolish. Now, I'm not saying anything good or bad about Putin, but that just seems foolish that anybody anywhere would allow that kind of a thing. Right? Doesn't that seem dangerous? Also on this day in 2020, three months into the COVID-19 epidemic, Chinese President Xi Jinping finally travels to Wuhan, epicenter of the outbreak as the rate of daily new infections declines in China. As the rate of daily new infections declines in China, falls to 19 new cases and 17 deaths. So three years ago today, the Chinese president went to Wuhan. Uh, and then on this day in 2021, Merrick Garland confirmed as U.S. Attorney General by the U.S. Senate. Also on this day in 2021, video gaming platform Roblox goes public on the New York Stock Exchange. Here's another billion number valued at $45 billion. I can just tell you already, there's a lot of money to be made in gaming. There are even gaming tournaments. I encouraged Ty, my oldest son once upon a time, because he's just amazingly good at video games, playing video games. And there are tournaments. So you can enter tournaments playing video games. Uh, at the time, you, he and I were both real big into Halo. Uh, he used to play with me all the time. But now he's a dad with three kids, so he doesn't have any more time for video games. Um and you can go and get into these tournaments and win like, you know, $50,000, $100,000 for being good at playing a video game. So that should tell you if there's that kind of money for people to play the game, there's definitely money in creating the games and then selling the games and um, growing the games. On this day in 2022, after a 99-day lockout, Major League Baseball and Major League Baseball Players Association reach a new collective bargaining agreement. Major League Baseball teams set to play full 162 game season in 2022. And finally, also on this day in 2022, true global death toll from COVID-19 estimated at 18.2 million in a new study by Washington University. That was our On This Days. Now let's do some Did You Knows. I'll pull this over here. All right. Did you know? Oh, I went down too far. The human brain is 78% water. Well, I mean, our whole bodies are like 75 or 80% water, right? So that why should that be a surprise? Oh, up to 60% of the adult human body is made up of water. Research has indicated that both the human brain and heart are around 73 to 78% water. I look at 73 to 78, y'all, and that's like uh, turtle water temperature. 73 would be kind of cool, but around 78 degrees is the water temperature we have to keep for, for Yancey's tank. Uh, did you know koalas sleep 18 hours a day? Koalas normally sleep for 18 to 22 hours a day. The reason for this is so that they have enough energy to digest the food that they eat properly. Did you know sponges hold more cold water than hot? This is mainly due to the effect of heat on water on a molecular level. Cold and hot water will have two different densities, and as such, their molecules will react differently when in contact with an object. The water molecules of, or colder water, I think it's supposed to say of colder water, the water molecules of colder water tend to move slower and do not go in opposite directions from each other. So you can get more water soaked up in a sponge if it's cold. You share your birth. Did you know you share your birthday with 19 million people? 
On average, a person will share a birthday with 19 million other people from a population of over 7 billion. If you were born on the least common day of the year, you would still share the same birthday with as eight with same birthday as 18 million people. So I don't get that because to me, the least common birthday would be February 29th, right? So why would there still be that many other people born on February 29th if all the other people on the other days of the year, 18 million to 19 million just doesn't seem like a very big difference to me. I might have to fact check this facts.net. Did you know cats have a hundred vocal cords? Cats have two main vocal cords and are capable of making over 100 different types of sounds. They work in conjunction with the trachea and the cartilage in the throat. Huh. And if you've ever heard a cat uh, in heat outside crying near your window uh, and you wake up in the night thinking someone has abandoned a human baby, then I guess this, this fun fact would make sense. Did you know ducks cannot walk without bobbing their heads? Now, this doesn't mean the little flirty thing, because when they're flirting, it's a it's a dramatic, it's like dancing. They really bob their heads. But yeah, when they're when they're just regular walking, there's little bobs that go. This is due to the rich supply of blood that circulates the. Oh, I'm on the wrong thing. Oh, that would be a fun. Did you know where I read the did you know and then read the wrong description to go for it? So we'll get to the one I almost read when it's time for the next. Did you know? We'll stick now with the ducks cannot walk without bobbing their heads. Did you know? Ducks often bob their heads to signify moods or emotions. At times, it may also be used to signify flirting during the mating season. Now, here's the other one. I started to read this description for that duck head bobbing one. The human tongue heals the fastest compared to all body parts. The lips are very close behind, guys. I'll tell you that. That tissue is so vascular that, uh, and it's kind of hard to stitch. So it's good that it heals fast. I guess that's why. Um, this is due to the rich supply of blood that circulates the tongue. It may also be because the mouth is constantly replenishing your taste buds your taste buds. So I, I started to read that description for ducks cannot walk without bobbing their heads. This is due to the rich supply of blood that circulates the tongue. So I knew something was up when I, when I started that sentence. Um, did you know, wow, who figured this out? Cows cannot climb downstairs. This is because they cannot easily see the ground right after their feet. Their knees and hips also make it difficult for them to move at a downward angle. Additionally, all their extra weight would leave them off balanced to possibly fall over. So please don't make your cows walk downstairs. Who knew? I mean, why would anybody know that? Did you know hummingbirds are the only birds that can fly backward? This kind of fits with the cows going downstairs, right? Hummingbirds are the only birds that cannot fly or that can fly backward. They're also able to hover and change flight direction quickly. These birds are such skilled flyers that they're often referred to as the flying ninja. And uh, when it's hummingbird season here, I have a hummingbird feeder that hangs out on the front porch that I can film with the camera that's on the front porch. They're just so fascinating to watch. They're just, again, God's jewelry, nature's jewelry. Um, did you know the Aztecs invented popcorn? Originally, they used this as an ornament and was used in headdresses. This ornament would be used as a way to praise their god, Tlaloc, the god of maize and fertility. Did you know the smallest ocean is the Arctic Ocean? It's also the shallowest and the coldest ocean among the world's five ocean bases. The Arctic Ocean is about 1.5 times the size of the United States. Hummingbirds hover like a helicopter. But isn't that bizarre? So birds have been doing these kind of things for eons, and it's only been in the relatively recent past, when you look at the, the big picture, that we could make airplanes fly. Oh, so Schultze shares a birthday with Vladimir Putin and Michelle Alexander. And Crafty Annie was born on her dad's birthday, 
Wait, I was born on my dad's birthday. He was born on his uncle's birthday and his uncle was born on his father's birthday. What the what? That is some crazy coincidence right there. Yeah, every now and then I've looked up who was born on my birthday. The only person I can think of right off the top of my head that has my birthday is Corbin Burnson. And I know him first. So I knew him first for that old uh, legal show, L.A. Law. I liked that show. And but I know him best from Psych, that show Psych with James Roday, Dulé Hill uh, and uh, Corbin Burnson plays uh, Sean Spencer played by James Roday, plays his dad in the show. He's great. The show is great. Please check out Psych if you don't know about that show yet. It's good stuff. Good, clean fun. A lot of 80s references in that show too, so that's kind of fun. Um, but Corbin Burnson is the only one I can think of right off the top of my head that shares my birthday. Uh, let's see what else. We'll do a couple more of these, and then we will spin for our channel of the week. Did you know the first phone book only had 50 names? The book was a page long. However, it was considered as an important step towards printed directories. Did you know depression is the most common mental illness? Second to this is anxiety disorders. More than 264 million people of all ages today suffer from depression. Did you know French fries were invented in Belgium? Historians claimed that the first instances of potatoes being cut and fried began in the late 1600s. Street vendors would often sell this before the outbreak of the French Revolution. Did you know the hair of a reindeer is hollow? The hair inside their noses are also efficient heat exchangers that warm up the cold air they breathe. Oops. Uh, the, the, uh, co warms up the cold air they breathe in. This makes them good insulators. And if you missed the second episode of This and That with Rich and Cat, there's a section in it where we talk about strange farms. And one of the strange farms is a, um, it's a moose farm. So not reindeer, but looking at the picture of this reindeer here, it made me think of those moose. It's a moose milk farm. There's, there are, uh, components in moose milk that are very healing. They're used for medicinal things. Uh, and there's this farm in, I don't remember where. So you have to go watch that episode to find out where this moose farm is and people can go visit. So the visiting happens at the one time of year when the moose all come to that farm to have their babies. And that's the point at which the females are milked because they're there to have their babies. Otherwise, the whole rest of the year, the moose just live in the forest around this farm. But uh, it's a farm I have on my list that I'd like to visit one day. Anyway, that's all we'll do of the did you knows. Again, I have to be sure and, and wrap things up on time today because we have those other two borders coming. Um, let's spin for our channel of the week. Let's pull that up. And let's see who we get. Oh, yeah, I always forget I can do it this way. All right, spinning for channel of the week. Rumi Official. Okay, so this is maybe some of you know about it. So he's a musician. Um, he does a lot of challenges and he uh, writes a lot of his own music. He'll have guests on every now and then. One of the things they do that I like the most is they'll have these competitions. So it'll be Rumi and a couple of his uh, musically inclined friends. And they, they have like uh, 24 hours. Sometimes it's less than that to write a song and it'll usually have a theme. Like it'll be, you have 24 hours to write a catchy tune summer, summer type song. Uh, and then they listen to all their songs and they vote on the one they like. And it's just fun to me. It's it, uh, just a fun little creative thing that he does. Uh, again, he also sometimes sings on the channel um, and he shares some of his uh, original music that he writes and records. Um what else have I seen him do? He did a neat microphone, uh, uh, like an experiment, I guess, where he had uh, like dozens of microphones on stands in this room. And I think he had the just different mic settings on each of them. And then he went around to all of them and said 
things into the microphones and you could hear the different, um, I guess I'm just very uh, auditory in the way I enjoy and process information. So um, let's see. Let's see. Schultze has something to share. A cool thing about moose is they can't stand humans. I think this is funny. Yeah. Again, check out the uh, check out that episode of this and that with Rich and Cat. I think it's episode number two. I don't remember what the title of it is. And what did we start with? Oh, we did strange stories in the news. So there were at the time. So the previous month leading up to that show, there had been some strange things happen in the news all around the world. So we have a little section that's about the strange stories in the news and then we move on to strange farms there's a snake farm and a body farm the moose farm um a bird nest farm seems like there's another one i don't remember what it is so there's five or six farms um and just again weird stuff i'd never heard of it until I, well i heard of the body farm before i won't tell you what that is because you have to go watch the episode to find out what it is but um interesting stuff interesting stuff uh, and there, there's even a picture. I even have a picture of these people that are milking a moose. And then you see the size of the moose. You, I guess you better be aware that they don't like humans because it wouldn't take much for them to just smash somebody to bits without even really trying. So yeah, Rumi official is the name of the channel. Uh, and I mean, he's funny and he's cute and he's very talented and the friends that he brings on the show to do stuff with him uh, are also very fun. I I almost think maybe he did a collaboration with PewDiePie once upon a time and he does a lot of rankings like he'll rank, you know, songs uh, or he'll uh, he has a series of like songs that sound exactly alike, like these pop songs and stuff. And when he then. Uh, plays them for you and then you realize oh my gosh it really is the same song it's just a different singer and the words are different maybe there's a couple more instruments used in one than there is in another or different instruments used uh and so again a very music based ch channel but like not technical theory stuff it's more just fun with music and artists and um history of music uh so yeah check that out what a fun channel to come up for channel of the week this week um Anybody have questions for me? And let me know. Raise your hands or put a one in the chat if you want to do call-ins. We can do the call-ins. We tried that uh, a few weeks ago. You're fine, honey. Why are you growling? She's trying to tell me something. Where's Where's Pappy? Pappy! Where's Pappy? Go tell Pappy. This is the old girl. She's about 15 now. Old standard poodle girl that's boarding with us with her sister. Her sister. Uh, her sister's much younger. The so sister's a German Shepherd girl. Uh, let's see, let me take that off. And then, yeah, let me know if you have questions or if you want to do a call in. You can do a call in and share a did you know? Or uh, uh, on this day, if you have something interesting to share with us, you're welcome to do that. Uh, just let me know and I'll put the phone number up and get the um, phone link app open. There must be something going on at Alliance Airport, y'all, because that jet engine sound. And it's funny. We're not that close to Alliance Airport, but um, what did it open? Mm. Yeah, if y'all want to do a call in right now, guys, I'll put the number. Let me. All right. So let me make sure we're going to have to test it. And then what works best, because when we did this before, of course, some other calls came and I didn't want to answer a call that wasn't from someone in the chat because I didn't want to be in the middle of a phone call while I'm doing a live stream and trying to communicate with you guys. So I think it will help if you want to call, give me your area code and the first three digits of your phone number so that when it comes up on my phone. I'll know it's you and I can answer it instead of answering and then having to explain on air to somebody. Oh, I'm sorry. You're on a live stream and I can't talk to you right now. So here's the number. You're fine, baby. You're fine. All right. We'll do this on other streams as too, uh, as well, Crafty mm -hmm. Annie. It was really fun when we did it before and I was so tickled that it actually mm -hmm. worked. Uh, so if you, again, if you want to call and ask a question or share your own little, did you know, or fun fact about, uh, something in your history, 
I'm glad you're here. I hope you're feeling better. And I continue to uh, pray for you that your recovery goes smoothly and quickly. Crafty Annie. That was for Crafty Annie. All right. So if somebody wants to call, there's the number. Uh, and if nobody wants to call again, we'll try this again on another stream as well. Um, channel members, again, want to let you know I put up um, a video just a little while ago oh. that is the rehearsal and recording session. So just the raw video. There's no editing. There's no, it's not even the, uh, it's not even the, vo the vocal that is used in the video because I record that separately with an app on my phone to get a clearer sound. Uh, and then when I'm uh, putting those together, and maybe I'll do a video on that as well. So then when I'm putting them all together, I have the video that I record here through StreamYard now. That's oh. so much easier. I just have to remember to turn the turtle tank oh. off when I'm recording because I've recorded um, some stuff. Oh. And then you can faintly hear the turtle, the water, you know, from the turtle fountains uh, running in the background video. Maybe it doesn't turn you all oh. off, but it so bugs me. So I record the video part here on oh. StreamYard. Um, and obviously there's microphones here, so it does pick up sound. Mm. And then I'm playing the um, mm. uh, the mm. background track. I'm playing the music track uh, through mm. the computer. Obviously, I need to be able to hear it to sing along mm. with it. Um, and then I record with that app on my phone to have the clearest vocal uh, file to work with. So then when it's time to put it all together... I have to, I lay a track of the video. I lay the track of the vocal, the voice recording from the app on my phone. And then I lay another track with the, the uh, music track, the, the, the music, the song um, with no vocals. It's the karaoke kind of version. And then I have to balance out the sounds and put in my reverb and all my filters. And then uh, obviously I still have a few hangups about being on screen to perform for those. So you'll usually see like these effects, these glittery effects or some kind of, uh, lens flares and stuff. Cause I just don't feel like it's y'all would want to look at me. <laughs> I just want you to listen. I, I don't necessarily want you to look at me. So I have all these things on the screen so that they, they distract you from looking at me. Um, anyway, so I just put up, it's a members only thing put up the most recent, this is from yesterday, where I did my rehearsal and recording session. It's not the whole session. I had, you know, I clipped some stuff out or it would have been just too long to put in a video. Uh, and then the video for that song, the final video for that song is premiering on the channel next Saturday, the 15th. And that's for everyone to watch. So uh, I, I'm just going to be interested to get your feedback once you've seen the final video. If you check out the the raw video that's just the rehearsal and the recording of the song. And then let me know when you compare them, when you see then the final one that has all the effects and the um, filters and stuff on it. And let me know what you think. And then we are still planning to do a members only live stream prize drawing. This will likely just be for gift cards. We don't have merch here yet. Uh, when we do our 2,000 subscribers live stream drawing, we'll have merch. So we'll have T-shirts and ball caps and mugs and uh, that kind of stuff to give away along with gift cards and uh, stuff like that as well. So that's still on, that's still in the works too, guys. Help us get to 2,000 so that everybody can be a part of that live stream uh, and win some prizes. But we'll have a members-only live stream next Wednesday uh, sometime in the evening, late afternoon, evening. Um, and we'll just draw for like some gift cards or Venmo, whatever will work to actually transfer uh, like money to you guys so that you can do whatever you'd like to do with it. So you still have time to join the channel and become a member to get in on that. Um, 99 cents. You can even join for 99 cents a month. So we're not looking to make a killing off of channel memberships, uh, but we are looking for ways to grow our little family that way. So check that out please join for today. Please uh, like and subscribe and share this stream. You guys have been so amazing in doing that for us. And I'll see someone new in the chat and they'll, you know, share that. Oh yeah, I'm here from so-and-so's channel uh, because people are sharing us out and that's how we help each other grow. All content creators appreciate that kind of participation and assistance from all of you. So, 
um, I thank you in mm-hmm. advance for that. So uh, we do. I do have a cover premiering tomorrow uh, at 4 p.m. That's Saturday, the 11th of March. This is an old uh, uh, Linda Ronstadt classic. So check that out. Then I have another premiere. Uh, I, my focus this month, in case you haven't figured that out, I'm doing a, a musical March focus. Uh, just really feeling inspired to share more music with you all. Uh, and it's very therapeutic for me to be doing something with music. So uh, I'll have a cover going out tomorrow at four. There will be another cover going out Wednesday at four. So the live stream may happen right after that cover. Uh, that might be fun to do it that way. Um, and those are all premieres. So I'll be there to chat with you and you can give me the, um, Hey, Heather, how are you? You can give me your honest feedback and critiques of what you see in here. Uh, and then that one that I shared for members only the rehearsal and recording session, that one premieres then next Saturday, the 18th. And then I'll have at least four more covers going out before the end of the month. I'm going to shoot for six. I just have to figure out for sure what other days of the week I want to do it. Cause there's not six more uh, Saturdays and Wednesdays available in the month. So um, yes, gallivanting galantes. Uh, I don't know if I'm saying that right. I hope I'm not butchering that. Yes. I remember seeing you uh, at mm-hmm. his channel as well. So I'm, I'm always amazed at the work that Paul does to help other channels grow while he's sharing about his own channel Ooh. growing. Uh, anyway, so we're going to call that uh, done for today then. Thank you all for being here. Uh, I will look for you at the premiere tomorrow. We will have a this and that with Rich and Cat going up on Monday. We just don't have it filmed yet, but I know what I'm going to do. I just have to wait. We've got to wait until we've got time to film it. Uh, so be watching for that. That'll go up on Monday evening. As always, those are always premieres so that we can chat for that too. Uh, I invite you to check out the other episodes in that series. And if you have ideas or things you'd like for us to do or try in an episode, feel free to share them because that's half the battle is coming up with stuff that we think you might halfway find interesting or enjoyable. Um, but, oh, all right. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, so that's all for today. Be, ha- be safe, be happy, be well, be blessed. Love to all from Rich Cat Ranch. Uh, again, I'll look at you, uh, look for you in some of these premieres coming up. Uh, share us out. We want to hit 2,000 so we can uh, share some prizes with more folks. We'll see our members next Wednesday, uh, late afternoon, evening for a members only live stream prize drawing. Get in on that by becoming a member. Uh, and I'll leave the chat open for a little bit so that you guys can say your goodbyes to each other. Uh, I appreciate you all. I love you all. Uh, I did a mail call today as well. So lots going on at the channel, lots going on in our lives, and we're thrilled about all of it. So uh, take care. I'll see you uh, next week. Cat's Clatch also coming up on Tuesday afternoon. Next week, that's a new faith-based uh, yeah. live stream that I'm doing. Uh, so if you're interested in that or you want to check it out, I'd love to have you there as well. Um, Please say a prayer again for my friend Adam Sky's sister. Uh, not sure if she's even still with us anymore. And you can go to his channel to uh, see the post he put up about that so that you'll be a little more in the loop on what's happening. But that family can definitely use your prayers and uh, to have you send some loving thoughts their way. Uh, prayers also for uh, Kenny and Debbie, the adventures of Kenny and Debbie. Kenny's brother just recently had surgery. Uh, to remove a lung because he was diagnosed with lung cancer. Successful surgery. Looks like everything is on the right track. But obviously, uh, as he recovers, I know prayers would be appreciated. So that's all for now. I love y'all. Thank you. Say your goodbyes to each other. And I'll see you again soon.